What is going on AP World? We have a video for you today on key women in U.S. history. You know they will be in the AP exam. Very important to know all these women that I will cover and hopefully you'll have a better idea by the time I am done with this video. So let's get going. We're going to go to colonial America, British colonial America. So from 1607 to 1776, let's talk about a couple of women you need to know. One is Anne Hutchinson. She appears often on the AP exam, so make sure you know her. Here is Anne. She lived in Massachusetts Bay Colony. She was eventually expelled by the governor, John Winthrop, Winthrop, and you know him from his famous City Upon a Hill message, to Rhode Island. Who was Rhode Island founded by? Do you know? Do you know? This dude was also expelled. Roger Williams. And why was she expelled? Well, she challenged the church. And remember, this was the Puritan church. She challenged generals religious doctrine, and she even claimed to have had revelations from God. And, and the fact that she was a woman on top of all this stuff really freaked out the leaders of Massachusetts Bay. Women in colonial America, most of them lost property when they were married, so they had very few rights. If they did have their own property when they became married, their husband would then get the property. They could not vote, hold office, or have really any sort of political power. But there's one group of women that tended to have more rights than others, and those were Quaker women. And Quakers were in Pennsylvania, founded by William Penn, who was a Quaker. Okay, some famous women in terms that you need to know from the 1800s. Well, we have Abigail Adams. She was the wife of John Adams and mother of John Quincy. And there's John Adams on the right and Abigail on the left. And she urged John to remember the ladies in 1776 at the Continental Congress. And she's like, don't forget about me and other ladies John and he's like oops sorry bro because he did not remember them cult of domesticity very popular term throughout AP US history this is the idealization of women in their roles as wives and mothers essentially they are expected to stay at home and raise the family raise children something that goes along with this is the idea of Republican motherhood which was women were to raise good children for the benefit of society and the Republic in other words raise them to be good little American citizens the Lowell system from the 1830s in Lowell, Massachusetts, there were they were farmers' daughters in Massachusetts that worked in a local factory. Most of these women were young and unmarried, and they would work in a series of eight-hour shifts. In 1848, in Seneca Falls, New York, about an hour, hour and a half from where I live in Buffalo, New York, there was a convention, and this convention was for women's rights. This will be on your exam. The Declaration of Sentiments, and it said that all men and women are created equal. And two very famous women from here were Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott. The women's rights movement prior to the Civil War was mostly middle class women, and they were closely linked to two other reform movements, and that was slavery and the temperance movement. Temperance is the reduction or elimination of alcohol. They wanted the following goals. One, suffrage. Always going to be suffrage. And two, the abolition of slavery. Again, those two movements were closely linked. Sarah Grimke was a famous uh, woman. She was, she was the first woman to support suffrage and abolition to speak out for both of those. And she was from the South. Dorothy Dix. There's four women here you need to know. Mid to late 1800s. She favored mental health reform, treatment for the mentally ill. Jane Addams, late 1800s, early 1900s, the progressive era. She was the founder of the Whole House in Chicago, which benefited poor women and immigrants and children as well. Ida B. Wells Barnett, late 1800s, early 1900s. She led an anti-lynching movement, and this says, holy cow, know this because that will appear quite often. Ida B. Wells was against lynching. Don't confuse her with Ida Tarbell, who was against the Standard Oil Company. Tar equals oil. Ida B. Wells equals against lynching. Margaret Sanger from the 1920s, she advocated birth control. Prior to the Civil War, most, most women worked in textiles. Late 1800s to early 1900s, they took on more roles, including domestic servants, Worked in garment factories. Think of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire in New York City in 1911. And they were also teachers. When in doubt, women did not receive equal pay throughout history. So just know that. 19th Amendment, here is Alice Paul, one of the most important women from the early 20th century. She was in favor of women's suffrage. She was arrested for campaigning, for protesting outside the White House, demanding for women's suffrage. She went on a hunger strike. She refused to eat for so long that she was actually forced to have an IV hooked up to her so she wouldn't die. 
And prior to this amendment, the 19th Amendment, women had the greatest voting rights out west. So different states could have different voting rights. And the further out west you went or the further uh, or the closer to the frontier, women did have more rights. Be able to recognize that in case you see that. When in World War II, we have Rosie the Riveter. You know her. This encouraged women to work in factories in large numbers. When the war was over in the 1950s, women were encouraged to go back to the home in this idea of the cult of domesticity. And virtually every TV show that you would see in the 1950s would entail a husband and wife and two children. And the mother would raise those two children at home while the husband worked. More famous women post-World War II. These two women, I would be shocked if you don't encounter them. Betty Friedan, she wrote The Feminine Mystique. This is from the early 1960s. And she criticized the cult of domesticity and said that many women were feeling very unfulfilled simply staying at home. She was the first president of NOW, or the National Organization of Women, and she was a huge advocator of women's rights. Rachel Carson wrote a book called Silent Spring, and this brought awareness to environmental pollution. So these two women know them, know their names, and know the books they wrote. The Equal Rights Amendment. This was an amendment proposed to the Constitution dating back uh, to Alice Paul's days. This never passed, and it stated equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. This narrowly failed. It needed 38 states to pass the amendment, and 35, only 35 of them did. And Phyllis Schlafly, be able to recognize this name, she was a woman that led the opposition to the ERA, or the Equal Rights Amendment. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Virtually everything you need to know about women's history for the A-Push exam. If you have not already, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. As we get closer to the exam, I'm going to ask you to tell as many people about these videos as possible. If you have any questions, comments, ideas, anything, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much and have a good day.